Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Dr. Shazarias from Department of Botany, Division of Science and Technology, University of Education, Township, Lahore. And the course title is Environmental Biology. The topic for today's discussion is tanneries and the hospital waste. This is lecture number 18. So tanning is the process of treating the skins and hides of animals in order to produce leather and it is carried out in the tanning industry. Basically it is the leather processing of all the shaving hair nails of the animal hides in order to produce a fine product leather. So it can also be defined as a place or the residence where the skins of the animals are processed in order to produce a fine product or the finalized form of the leather which can be exported into the different in, in countries. So more tanning industry or the leather industry is the most dynamic sectors of economy in Pakistan after the textile and the cotton industry. This sector is contributing not a great deal, but it has a potential to boom, especially in footwear and the garments. So the footwear and the leather garments are job-oriented sectors which provide employment to the large population. As leather industry consists of six sex sectors, that is tanning, leather footwear most of the leather garments leather gloves leather shoe and other leather goods so the tanning industry plays a very important role in the progress of these all mentioned sectors by providing them the basic material like leather history the leather industry in pakistan is as good as a history of country Ancient people used leather for water skins, bags, boots, armor, tremors, casings, boots, and sandals. So during the colonial era, just a few number of tanneries were working in larger cities such as Lahore, Karachi, and New Delhi, etc. So in 1950s, the number of well-equipped tanneries increased in Lahore, Karachi, Kasur, Multan, Sahewal, Hyderabad, Shehapura, Peshawar, and Gujramwala. Leather manufacturers and exporters are decisive to increase export of quality finished leather and leather goods. So the leather is one of the most important contributor to the country's GDP and the foreign exchange earnings. This continued rise in the number of tanneries is due to increase in the demand of finished product as well as raw material in the national and the international markets. Therefore, uh, there are as much as 800 tanneries in the Pakistan which are engaged in producing the best quality finished leather of buffalo, cow, goat, sheep hides, and sheep skins, respectively. So, today, the Pakistan is among the leading countries in the production of leather garment and the gloves. According to the present status, where the Pakistan lies, presently it is contributing around $874 million per year. So the share of leather industry is contributing about 6.15% in the total country's GDP, 7% in the total exports and the 6.56% in the foreign exchange. So this is approximately the data taken from the various internet sources. So there are a list of uh, many leather in tanneries which are present into the different cities of Pakistan like in, in the Lahore. There is an East Pakistan Chrome Tannery located in the area of Gulbarg. Nude Leather Garments, Eastern Leather Company at 
the Ferozpur Road, in Karachi, Universal Leather and Footwear Industries, Mahmood Brothers, Shahbaz Brother Tanries, in Multan, KTM Leather, Multan Hyde Company Private Limited, and in Gujrawala, there are the primary prime tanneries which are located in that area. So the question arises basically what is what is actually this tanning process? Actually, it is a chemical treatment process in which the soft and perishable proteins of animal hides or the skins are converted into the durable and the flexible leather. Basically, there are two types of the tanning like vegetable tanning and chrome tanning. So the vegetable tanning, the active agent is tannic acid, which is derived from the bark of the certain trees. That's why it is called as vegetative tanning. And as the name indicated in the chrome tanning, the salts of metals such as aluminium, chromium, zinc are used. So this method is also called as the curing. Tannery wastes. The pickling and the chrome tanning effluents contain sulfuric acid, chrome, chloride, sodium bicarbonate and sulfates. So the major pollutant of the post tanning process are chrome salts, diastuff residues and various agents and syntans and various other organic matter. So this is all the waste in terms of liquid industrial effluent and the solid waste in the form of uh, sludge semi-solid liquid material that is called as sludge solid waste all of these waste are leased or dumped into an open area without any proper treatment and the most famous example of this is the Kasur Tannery Waste Management Agency here they have set up a primary treatment plant in order to process all the uh, industrial effluents of the tanning industries which are located into the area of the Kusur and uh, they have said that or according to their findings they have reported that they will they are going to throw the water and their water is pure that is free from metal and it is 99.9% .9 pure which they are processing in that uh, unit or in that primary area plant where they have set up the different legumes, 16 legumes and recycling of water in these legumes is continuously running all over 24 hours a day and after they check all the environmental parameter they have reported that this water is free from any kind of metals. Another uh, treatment plant has also been set up in the Sadiq Leather Works uh, tanning industry which is located along the Sheikhpura roadside. So actually what is the leather process in order to get the finished leather um, uh, that can be commercially available uh, for the export purposes. First one is curing and preservation and it can only be done by the use of sodium chloride and various other chemicals, soaking, liming, unhavering, deliming, degreasing, pre-tanning which can be done by the basic chrome sulfate, tanning, retaining fat liquoring and final is the finishing product finishing uh, uh, fine product of the leather which can be done by the use of our uh, chemicals like and the heavy metals like cadmium lead chrome pigment nitrocellulose liquor emulsion waterproofing agent so our leather will be processed in all these steps one by one by the use of all these different chemical salts and the heavy metals. So the sewage treatment generally involves three stages. First one is called as primary stage that is the primary treatment that removes the material that will either float or readily settle out by gravity. The shredded material is removed later by sedimentation or by the flotation process. In the secondary treatment it is a process for the wastewater for sewage to achieve a certain degree of effluent quality by using a sewage treatment plant with physical phase suppression to remove certain label solids and a biological process to remove dissolved and all the suspended organic compounds. So tertiary treatment is also required in order to treat the sewage sludge like 
It is the final cleaning process that improves wastewater quality before it is reused, recycled or discharged to the environment. The treatment removes remaining inorganic compounds and substances such as nitrogen and phosphorus. So till in Pakistan or according to my uh, general knowledge, there is only a primary treatment plant which has been established in the various industries of the uh, Kusur and in the Shekhupura. They do not have set the secondary treatment and the tertiary treatment uh, plant units. So the unit processes majorly include these five different steps. First one is the chemical coagulation that is an essential part for the drinking water and the wastewater treatment. So it is used for the clarification of water using coagulant agents that are mainly used for municipal waste treatment like iron coagulant include ferric sulfate all available forms of iron are also included in this category. Flo uh, flocculation refers to the process by which fine particulates are caused to clump together into a flock. The flock may then flow to the top of the liquid settle to the bottom of the liquid in the process of sedimentation or it may be readily filtered from the liquid. Then filtration or the sedimentation is actually the tendency of the particles in the suspension to settle out of the fluid in which they are in entrained and come to rest against a barrier. And this is due to their motion through the fluid in response to the forces again acting on them. So these forces can be due to gravity, centrifugal or the electromagnetism. Then comes filtration that is the physical, biological, chemical operation which separates the solid matter and fluids from a mixture with a filter medium that has complex structure through which only the fluid can pass. And last but not the least is the water disinfection process that means the removal deactivation or killing of some pathogenic microorganisms. So the microorganisms are destroyed or deactivating resulting in the termination of growth and reproduction. When microorganisms are not removed from drinking water then the drinking water usage will cause people to fall ill. So there are mostly four common ways to treat the wastewater treatment like the physical water treatment um, physical water treatment typically consists of filtration techniques that involves the use of the fil uh, screens, sand or multimedia filtration membranes. The screens typically used as a pretreatment method to remove the larger suspended material whereas the sand uh, filtration it frequently used to filter the suspended solids that are present in it. Biological treatment that is the treatment of water using a wide variety of microbes, primarily the bacteria. And these microbes convert biodegradable organic matter contained in the wastewater into the simpler substances by the additional biomass. Third one is the chemical treatment. That is chlorine chemicals are very effective against bacteria, viruses and fungi that contaminate the water so basically four types of chlorine chemicals are commonly used in agriculture like sodium hypochlorite, calcium hypochlorite, gaseous chlorine and chlorine dioxide. There is also in the tanning there is a treatment for the sludge, sewage sludge. That is in sludge thickening dry solid content of the sludge is increased by reducing the water content with low energy input. Sludge thickening can be applied both as a pretreatment for digestion as well as a pretreatment for dewatering in the wastewater treatment plant that operates without any digestion. So, in KTWMA Kasur, they have also a separate uh, sludge lagoon where they are dumping all sedimented layer of the sludge into the solidified form, dried form, as well as into the liquid form. So what is uh, the aim of this water treatment? Like drinking water is treated to kill or inactivate any pathogenic microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria and certain parasites to remove inorganic 
and organic species contaminants which have found their way into the water system because of pollution and to re reduce the naturally occurring organic compounds such as humic acid. So uh, there is another topic for today's discussion which is called as hospital waste that is any waste which is generated in the diagnosis treatment or immunization of human being or animals or in research in a hospital so this is also called as biomedical waste medical waste is any kind of waste that contain infectious material that is the material that's potentially infectious and this definition include the waste which is generated by the healthcare facilities like physicians offices hospitals dental practices laboratories medical research facilities and veterinary clinics so the medical waste can contain uh, bodily fluids like fl blood or other contaminants according to the medical waste tracking act in 1988 they have defined medical waste as the waste generated during medical research testing diagnosis or the treatment of either human beings or other animals so some examples are the culture dishes glasswares bandages gloves discarded discarded shops like needles scalpels swabs and other related tissue so basically there are two types of the hospital waste like the risk waste and the non-risk waste so the non-risk waste may include paper, cardboard, packaging, food waste and the mixture of the aerosol. Whereas the risk waste according to WHO that is World Health Organization Medical Waste Classification. They have issued its own guideline on the different type of medical waste which include infectious waste shops pathological waste pharmaceutical genotoxic radioactive chemical and general or many other so we will uh, we will have a look in detail of all these uh, different type of the waste so infectious waste that is anything that's infectious or contaminated so they may include culture protein from the bone and the skin samples waste that have been collected from the surgery and autop autopsies post-mortem waste from the infected patient from the hemodialysis patients infected animal from the laboratory and any material having contact with the infected patient it comes under the category of the infectious waste and these are all the examples that i have already described like discarded blood shaps and wanted microbiological culture stocks identifiable body parts other human animal tissue used bandages dressings discarded gloves etc comes in the category of infectious waste the next category according to world health organization is called as the pathological waste pathological waste are the human or the animal tissues body part in the form of blood or the body fluids comes into the category of the pathological uh, waste shops the waste like needles scalpels broken glass and the razors all comes in this category and any other uh, item that can cut and puncture may be included in the category of the shop waste here you can see in the picture then comes to the pharmaceutical waste that is it may include unused and expired drugs or the medicines like creams pills antibiotics are the pharmaceutical waste like surplus vaccine drugs discarded item used in handling all these pharmaceutical for example bottles gloves mask tubes etc genotoxic waste various hydrotoxic drugs and the other hazardous toxic waste that is carcinogenic mutagenic or teratogenic comes in this category like 
vomiting feces urine from the patient that are treated with these cytotoxic drugs or the chemicals and they are all comes under this category of the genotoxic waste chemical waste the liquid waste typically from machines batteries and other various disinfectants for example the mercury waste such as broken clinical equipment spillage cadmium may waste can be collected mainly from the discarded back batteries radioactive waste any waste containing potentially radioactive materials with radionuclide generated from in vitro uh, an analysis of the body tissues fluid in vivo like body organism imaging and various therapeutic procedures journal or other wastes all other that may come under the non hazardous waste category called journal other waste and this type does not cause any particular chemical biological physical or radioactive danger there is another classification of these waste according to epa medical waste in us like journal medical waste the bulk of most medical waste mostly typical household and the office waste infectious waste any waste that could cause an infection in human like blood human tissues or anything contaminated with the bodily fluids hazardous waste medical waste the waste that's dangerous but not infectious like shops discarded surgical equipments and some chemical waste radioactive wastes any waste generated as a result of radioactive treatment like cancer therapies and medical equipment that uses the nuclear elements may comes under this category so this classification has been given by the epa in the united state that is the epa medical waste guideline can also categorize the solid medical waste in these all four general types so there are certain methods for through treatment and disposal of all these medical waste the first method is the incineration incineration is the waste treatment process that involves combustion of organic substances contained in the waste material so the incineration and other high temperature waste treatment systems are described as thermal treatments incineration of the waste material convert the waste firstly into the ash then the flue gas and then heat the second method is called autoclave as we all know that it is a strong heated container mostly used for the wet sterilization or the steam sterilization used for the chemical reaction and other processes under the high temperature and pressure at approximately 115 pound per inch square for a temperature of at 121 degrees centigrade is recommended for the successful autoclave operation then the chemical treatment so the chemical disinfection primarily through the use of chlorine compounds kills microorganisms in medical waste and can often oxidize hazardous chemical constituents the first one is called chlorine bleach Chlorine bleach has been used for disinfecting processes for the years. So you might use it to clean your, uh, uh, to kill the E. coli especially, the cultures of bacteria. Chlorine compounds are used in swimming pools to reduce the risk of disease transmission. Another chemical that is ethylene oxide treatment is used to disinfect the material and is sometimes used in treatment of medical waste. Ethylene oxide treatment is used more often to sterilize the equipment that will be reused. It is too expensive to use on equipment or waste that will send to a landfill. So incineration is the better choice. Ethylene oxide treatment gas infiltrate packages as well as the product themselves to kill microorganisms that are left during the production or the packaging processes so this was all about the uh, tanneries and their treatment processes 
and the hospital waste various types of hospital waste according to USA guideline and the UK guideline and here is a list of all the references thank you very much